Hey, I'm John Cannell, and today on Preppy Kitchen, we're making an easy, amazing strawberry rhubarb pie. So let's get started. First off, we're making a delicious graham cracker pie dough. Start off by adding three cups or 360 grams of flour into a large bowl. I also want one and a half cups or 170 grams of graham cracker crumbs. If you can't find graham crackers where you live, go ahead and use a Biscoff or Speculose cookie or any kind of like flavorful crumbly cookie. To sweeten the deal, I want two tablespoons of granulated sugar, two. For a little contrast, I'm adding one teaspoon of kosher salt. Grab a whisk. My scale is done for the moment. We're just gonna mix this up. The graham crackers give you like a wonderful extra crunchiness and flavor that really complements the strawberry and the rhubarb. This is a special delicious thing that's really only available in the spring. If you can grow it in your garden, plant some. It comes back every year a little bit larger and you have like a little surprise. Like when winter's over, you're like, oh, the rhubarb's coming up. I can make delicious rhubarb things. It's great. It like takes care of itself too. All right, nicely mixed. Let's grab one and a half cups or three sticks of cold butter, rock hard cold butter. Ah. And we're gonna cut it into cubes. Add the butter in and just toss it a bit as you go so it doesn't form one giant mega butter clump. Butter, butter, and butter. If you've never made your own pie dough before, you gotta start doing it. It's so easy and you can always keep pie dough in the freezer. So like if you have an abundance of fruit or someone's coming over, you just let it defrost for a bit, pat it out, and you can make something delicious. Normally I do this by hand, but today I'm enlisting the help of my pastry blender. It's a great tool just to work butter into those pea-sized pieces and um, get your pastry dough started. My butter is started, but I don't want to use this the whole time because it'll cut the butter into pieces that are too small. I want to have butter lumps ranging from the size of almonds to tiny peas. For the rest of this, I'm going to use my cold hands to break the butter up. If your butter is all broken into tiny little pieces, you're just not gonna get that same flaky, amazing pie crust. So leave some of the big ones in there too. I want you to take a look at the texture. Here, it's a crumbly mountain, but there's tiny pieces of butter and there's lots of like larger clumps hanging around here and there. That's great. We're gonna use some ice water now and specifically about three quarters of a cup. So I made a big batch. I'm gonna measure out the three quarters of a cup, 180 mils. Drizzle in about half of the ice water as you stir with a fork. You can make pie dough with a food processor too, but honestly, I love making it by hand. It gives you such control, and you can't get those big lumps of butter when you use the food processor. Okay, that's about half. I'm gonna mix this for a bit, just to distribute the ice water. Okay. I'm gonna continue adding the ice water about a tablespoon at a time until it forms a shaggy mixture. Shaggy mixture, looks like this, but you know it's done when you can press it together with your hands and then hold it and the, the clump will hold together. That fell apart right away, it is not ready. And by the way, this delicious recipe just so happens to be from the spring chapter of my cookbook. So if you have a copy, crack it open to page 241 and bake along with me. And there's links in the description box below if you don't. One more check, grab a big clump, press it together, that is just about right. I think I could use like maybe one more tablespoon. Last tablespoon. My pie dough is just about there. It's time to knead it together in the bowl. So I'm gonna press it down to compact it. And I'm gonna kind of bring it up and push it down. Unlike in a regular dough where you're like kneading it out and stretching it to form gluten, here it's more of a press and shove pull it over, press and shove. You're kind of taking those lumps of butter and making them into flat pages. If you see any dry clumps, like I see a little bit from the bottom here, just sprinkle a little bit more water. My pie dough has basically come together. I'm gonna to turn it out onto the counter right now, shape it together. Your dough's not gonna be perfect. It needs some chill time so the hydration can kind of seep through into the dry places and just let it come together a bit more. What I'm gonna do is just fold it over once and then press it together again. You can see it's holding together pretty well. It lets me know the pie dough is ready to cut and chill. Grab a bench scraper and cut it into two basically equal pieces. 
Ooh, look at all those layers of butter we created. So easy. I'm gonna take both of these pieces and shape them into squares. This, by the way, I haven't even told you, but you've noticed from the thumbnail in the intro, it's a slab pie. So instead of being one of these like big juicy pies with the filling that's super messy, this is gonna be baked in a sheet pan. So you have a perfect ratio of like delicious, crisp, tasty crust and this amazing potent filling. It's baking in a rectangular thing. That's why we need rectangular pieces of dough. We're gonna wrap these up now. You can use wax paper like I am, parchment paper or plastic, whatever you'd like. and we're gonna let these chill for at least two hours. Let these set up, you'll be so much happier than if you tried to skimp on the chill time. We'll be back with the magic of editing. Towards the end of your dough's chill time, we're gonna make a delicious strawberry rhubarb filling. So these guys are only available in spring, like I said earlier, and you have to use them while they last. I'm gonna use about half a pound of rhubarb for this, cutting off both of the ends. You never eat green rhubarb, by the by. Have your stalks down the middle. This pie bakes fairly quickly, so you can't have giant pieces of rhubarb in it. Rhubarb also tends to be a bit fibrous, so smaller pieces will cook better. Now we're gonna chop these into quarter to half inch thick pieces. If you tasted rhubarb like this, it's so sour. So <laughs> sour. But you know what makes that better? Sugar. So having rhubarb gives you a wonderful like little pop of flavor and really like sets off the strawberries and other things. In my book, I also have a rhubarb panna cotta and it is so good. Okay, my rhubarb is chopped. I just wanna weigh it out and see how much I have. It should be half a pound or about 225 grams. I have a little bit extra, but that's okay. It's like one and a half-ish cups if you're measuring it by volume. This gets set aside, and now we have to prep our strawberries out. One and a half pounds of delicious strawberries. These will complement the rhubarb so nicely. We're gonna hull them and quarter them so they're nice, beautiful, similarly sized pieces. Our strawberries are prepped. Add your rhubarb into the large bowl, along with 45 grams or a quarter cup and two tablespoons of tapioca flour. This is gonna be our binding agent and make it really nice and perfectly silky. If you can't find tapioca flour, you can use cornstarch. The benefit to tapioca flour is that cornstarch kind of gives you a muddier color and tapioca will be totally clear. So it'll look nice and vibrantly red. Remembering that my rhubarb is completely sour, we need some sweetener for this. So one and a half cups or 300 grams of granulated sugar. Just enough sugar. This is optional, but a quarter teaspoon of freshly cracked black pepper will really add a nice kind of like depth of spiciness. It's just gonna be right on the back of your throat and make you wanna have more. Try it out. My scale is done. Let's toss everything together so things are nicely coated and evenly distributed. And I'm sure you know this, but the strawberries and the rhubarb will release some of their liquid. If you wanna use frozen rhubarb, you can totally do it, but there's a couple things you need to know. Let it thaw partially, so like 20 to 30 minutes on the counter, and then drain any of the excess liquid that comes out. The rest of the recipe will follow as normal. You might need five extra minutes of bake time. Once the filling's done, set your oven to 425 so it's nice and hot by the time this pie is assembled. This looks great, and it smells delicious too. I'm gonna set this aside, and now it's time to roll our pie dough out. Grab your pie dough. Lightly flour your work surface. If you're using a pastry mat, there is no fuss, no muss. It'll lift right up, nothing's gonna stick. Okay, a little more flour for the top, and importantly, flour if you're rolling pin two. I'm gonna roll this into a 13 by 16 inch rectangle, so get started. And if you notice some cracking during the roll, just let it sit on the counter for like two to five minutes. It's just a little bit cold and it needs to warm up. Last thing, as you roll, keep your pie crust moving. Don't let it sit in one spot for too long because it'll stick. The butter will glue itself and you'll be annoyed. So keep it moving, add more flour as needed. Roll this into a nine by 16 inch rectangle, 10 by 16 inch, 13 by 16 inch rectangle. Oh dear, I knew that was wrong. This will fit into this quarter sheet baking pan so you can always check and just see how you're doing. I'm close. 
Yeah, that looks good. This looks nice, so I'm gonna roll this onto my rolling pin. See how easy that is with the pastry mat? Now transfer it back on. Now we're gonna load our crust up with all this delicious fruit filling and you can see how much juice has been expressed from the berries as well as the rhubarb right now. Just from being set aside for a few moments. Get all the juice out. Spread your filling into an even layer. You wanna be as even as possible so that the lattice we're gonna put on top has a nice place to set. Otherwise the lattice will dip and nobody wants that. Nice and even. Repeat that process for your remaining slab of pie dough. Roll this into a 13 by 16 inch rectangle. I love seeing these big streaks of butter all throughout. It's so pretty. It's extra pretty because you know it's gonna be so delicious. I'm marking this off into two inch segments. The best way to cut pie crust is with a pizza cutter. So go ahead and roll it out. Okay. Now we're gonna arrange the lattice over the top of our pie. Just like that. Look how nice that looks already. I'm so chuffed. Over under. This is such a wide lattice. It's really dramatic, but it's also much easier to make. I'm trimming the edges. So there's about an inch of excess hanging over. Fold the edges under so it looks nice and neat. Our pie is almost ready. What will seal the deal, quite literally, is an egg wash. So whisk an egg up. Gently brush the surface with the egg wash. You want complete coverage here because the egg wash will make things golden and beautiful and any parts that don't have the egg wash will be pale and less glossy. A final flourish is a sprinkle of sanding sugar. You could use granulated sugar if you want, but it adds a sweet sparkly crunch to your bite, so I love it. Okay. Our pie is ready to go into the oven, 425 for 20 minutes, then reduce temperature to 375 and bake for 30 to 35 minutes until it's a deep, golden, beautiful color. If it's getting too dark, you can cover it with foil halfway through the bake, so just keep an eye on it. In you go. Allow your pie to cool completely before cutting, then top with a big dollop of ice cream or whipped cream, and you're ready to enjoy. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. <laughs> it's just so good. The wonderful flaky pastry crust, the jammy, amazing strawberry rhubarb filling. It's so much flavor from the rhubarb. It comes together with that scoop of ice cream and a little tiny hint of pepper and it's basically amazing. I hope you get a chance to make this recipe from my book, and if you like this video, check out my book playlist.